um, I've got something pretty smooth going now. You can see the uh, oval shape of the scoop is also well defined. And now we're going to try sawing it down to as close to this shape as possible. Now of course the back saw is not made for uh, cutting these kinds of curves, right? So I would cut something inwards like that. Just try and move, get as close to that line as possible. <laughs> it's a horrible line, but you get what I mean. <coughs> Same thing. Establish your line first. I was a little bit more adventurous on this side and I saw it a bit closer to the line because I left a huge margin on the other side. Then now we're just going to sever it on these two sides. Actually, I might do a, a small V cut over here <laughs> because I was super generous with uh, the line there. So over that one, you can see that I left like a lot of excess on the sides of the scoop and what I'm doing in these scenes is just chopping all of that down. Basically the same thing, just different parts of the blank. I have this setup over here which uh, allows us to get at some of the smaller bits in this shape that we might not have cut down earlier. So I've done quite a bit of it. You can see I've got it quite close to the shape. Uh, but I'll just show you how I make uh, more minute cuts so that I don't... because the back saw can be pretty aggressive. So I'll show you how I make some of these more minute cuts. You see I've set up the hold fast I am actually using a wider board to uh, support the scoop just because of that hole there. Uh, we can't get a very good, we might not get a very good uh, grip on it if we try to hold fast something round like that. And see, I want to just saw this small bit off. Just. Same thing, establish my line, and then work through it. So it's going to be a very, sh a very small amount of material that's coming off. And you want to watch out for the possibility that it might uh, just flake off or tear out at the bottom there. And your saw might f flop forward. So I'm not really applying a ton of force. I'm just letting the, the teeth of the saw do the work. So I'll just get rid of some small edges like that. Uh, I did it for these top parts as well. So there's a couple more curves that I want to have in my scoop since this is obviously not very ergonomic. And uh, one of them is actually going to be something goes like this. Like that, if you can imagine, the scoop kind of curves upwards this way. And same thing on the other side. And maybe we'll have something uh, curving down on the back. Uh, it's a bit hard to um, visualize now, but we'll get to that. So how I'm going to get this scoop in the center is that I'm going to first cut myself a... Hmm. We have a groove there. Using my wider chisel, 
can bulk that down. Move my bench pack away for a while. So You don't want to get too thin You don't want your scoop to end up breaking But You do want a bit more shake on it Than it has right now Then I'll flip it around And meet it on the other side You'll notice that I'm using the chisel this way uh, Just because I want the bevel to kind of like follow it on the way down I could do it this way as well But I just find it it's a bit wilder And because of the, the this flat part having to sit on something It might cause me to make a deeper cut than I intend So yeah, bevel down Types. Yeah, so you can adjust it to the uh, amount of scoop that you like. Just inching it upwards. So of course with the curve of the spoon, um, there are going to be two ways that you can remove material to create that, that scoop look, right? And uh, one of them was when we hollow the inside here. Another one would be matching the curve on the outside. Um, I could continue using this to kind of chisel out the material, but at this point I would suggest setting up your bench pack. So this, this, the bench pack will act as this, this block, you no longer have to use a stop block like that because we will also be using the bench pack for some finer uh, finer adjustments so once we introduce the bench pack right, it allows you a bit more flexibility in your um, carving because I no longer just have to butt it up uh, on this flat surface over here I also have the ability to kind of hold it against this uh, groove over here against this upper shoulder and why that would be useful is because as we start to round down these corners to match the shape of our scoop the bench pack allows you to reach different parts of the curve more easily yeah so you can start seeing that I'm already beginning to um, create this curve to follow the inside of the scoop uh, it's quite a bit of material to remove actually and um, if you want to you can use your mallet to kind of take down that material perhaps in this direction
So the idea is that we want to start shaping um, all our sides down into something a bit more curved before we uh, do fine pairing because us pairing is going to take you forever using the chisels. Yeah, and I'll be back with that soon. Yep. So you can see I have a nice curve going on the back here. Uh, obviously, lots more work to do, but we can work through that slowly. I secured my bench pack, and pretty much the rest of my work is going to be done using the the bench pack. Uh, anytime I need to um, reach an angle that maybe I can't, I'll just uh, readjust my bench pack. Uh, yeah, uh, the top portion is still looking very very flat, so that's when I want to start rounding my handle down a bit. Uh, instead of having something that feels like a, a block, I would probably want to achieve some kind of a roundness like that. And that will require me to pare down quite a bit of material on these edges. But as long as we um, follow the grain, the material should come out quite easily. So no matter how irregular the shape is, I'm still obeying the grain. This is a downward, downward curve, so I'm, I'm going along the grain. And I wouldn't want to start cutting upward like that. You notice, you hear that sound, it's already a slight tail. Just turn it around, start going downwards in this direction. Go along with the grain, follow the curve. Likewise, when you reach that bit, I have to chop it off that, that side. Yeah. And that is one side. Just go ahead and do the other side. Again, safety wise, one of my hands is on my workpiece and uh, holding a chisel in the other. I do not have to put my hands in front of the blade at any point of time. Because the bench pack is anchoring it there for me. And now I have a roughish kind of handle. Uh, I also want to bring down these sharp edges a bit. But you don't want to lose the rim of the, the scoop that you already made. If you are worried, you can use your 10mm chisel, which would be a bit... The control would be a bit finer, move a bit less material, and you're less likely to disrupt that. Um, rim of the scoop that you've carved out earlier. Yeah, I wanna I will wanna keep like a, a nice little border of something like this. Uh just because it seems to match the aesthetic of this scoop. Yeah. Go ahead almost the big one. Just because of this larger bulk area here. You can see that I'm following the grain down this curve, still going along the grain on the sides and then more and more so across the grain as I reach the um, top of the scoop. Yeah, I kind of work a bit haphazardly, uh, so you'll notice that I keep flipping and working on the back and then the front, the back and then the front. Uh, this is more so that I have a good, um, oh, that was not a good tail. So there I tried to go against that. I got a bit lazy, but luckily we still have quite a lot of material. You can clean that up. Uh, but yeah, the reason why I, I like to alternate between the areas that I work on is so that I have a more big picture um, idea of how my project is going. And the front, I can. There's this chunk that is annoying me. I'm actually just gonna go ahead and mallet that down some more. So you wanna be very comfortable with um, alternating between using just the chisel to pair and um, 
engaging your mallet for something a bit more aggressive. Uh, at this point, even slightly beforehand, uh, it's actually possible to start using the sandpaper to smooth out all the uh, slight irregularities, uh, maybe if you have any tilt, or the final shaping that you want to do, uh, maybe f like for the rim. And uh, of course, the cleaner that you've paired it using your chisels, the uh, less sanding that you're going to have to do. So I would start with 80 grit for any of the more um, violent tails. And then if not, 120 is a good place to start. Bring it up to as smooth as you like. I will not be sanding because of my pride. No, just kidding. Uh, I'll not be sanding because I want to try achieving like a, a carved finish, uh, which can be as smooth as something sanded if you follow the green, right? So you can also challenge yourself by doing that. Um, but yeah, that's about it. Uh, once you're done with sanding, it will just be a matter of putting some oil on varnish. And that is all I have for uh, the scoop video today. Thank you so much for watching. And I hope you're able to come up with um, something similar yourself. Uh, if you did enjoy it, do uh, leave a like and subscribe. And uh, I'll try to be back with some other carving class. Whether it's a spoon of a different shape or something else. Thank you. If you like it.